PayPal is a leader in online financial transactions. The stock is down 80% from its all-time high, and it's still down 25% in the last five years. So could this be an opportunity to buy the company? Well, that's what we're going to do here. We're value investors. Our goal is to take big drops in stock prices and see if there's a disconnect between that and the long-term value. Is this just a temporary fall for whatever reason? We're going to take a look at that. So in this video today, we're going to go through PayPal. We're going to go through some of the fundamentals of the business, look at our eight pillars, and then put it in a stock analyzer tool to determine a price to pay for the company. Our goal is to buy a company for less than its long-term intrinsic value. That is the main goal. If that sounds confusing to you, just keep watching and you'll understand more about what we mean by that. So make sure you watch this whole video. There's a lot of information here, no matter what level of investing you're at. So let's go check out PayPal in our software now. Okay, guys, so here's PayPal. Like I told you, look at this monster fall. 31016. All-time high on July 26th. This is why we put this in our software. We want you to see these all-time highs. Hit a low just a week or so ago of $58.95, and it's currently at $64. Look at this fluctuation. It's literally up over 10% in the last week. This is the market we're talking about. Any market, you'll see stocks fluctuate big time. You've got to remove yourself from the emotion of stock prices going up and down. All right? It's very, very important. So some of the big news with PayPal and some of the bull and bear cases for the company. So PayPal owns Venmo. Venmo has like 83 million users, active users. I love Venmo. I think it's phenomenal. And I love PayPal. Whenever I see PayPal on my options to pay, 90% of the time I use PayPal to pay. That's, that's how much I believe in PayPal's ability to protect me as a, as a user. They're introducing Venmo Teen soon for 13 to 17 year olds. I imagine it'll have, you know, working together with parents. That way kids can pay for things, but not go crazy, not go overboard. Imagine that. Yeah, you can basically give your kid a credit card, but it's Venmo instead. It allows them to pay for things with your money. Incredible. It'll help expand and keep people sticky. The more and more people use PayPal and Venmo, the more likely they are to stick there. Two bear cases for PayPal I want to go over. One, I think it's a temporary bear case, but online retail sales have dropped from 17% during the pandemic levels to 15% now. But you got to remember, before the pandemic, it was like 11 or 12%. But obviously, people did a lot more online during the pandemic, but it's got to come down a little bit. I think this trend is still in the upward direction, and that'll benefit PayPal. In addition to that, PayPal will be doing more and more overseas, especially with me. Like whenever I can buy something overseas, I always do it with PayPal. I want to make sure I have somebody on my side and that's huge for there. But a bear case for PayPal, in general, there's a lot of competition. There will be a lot of competition for, pay for their set of services. The question is, who do you trust most? Company like Apple coming up with Apple Pay and things like that. My personal opinion is even though Apple's great and I use Apple Pay, I know that PayPal is a smaller company Still a big company, but I know they're going to have my back a little bit more than I think than Apple will. Apple, I still need to go through Visa and all those things. Apple Pay isn't in charge of me disputing a transaction. I still got to go to Visa or Amex when I use my Visa or Amex through Apple Pay as of right now. A couple bull cases, though. There's been studies shown that when, when vendors offer PayPal as an option, their sales are 54% higher. That's an incredible number. That just shows how much people trust PayPal. If there's a vendor they might not know, they're like, hey, listen, if I can buy it through PayPal, I know I'm protected. And that's what people want with their money, that protection, that feeling of trust. That is a big component. 43% of financial transactions involved in the tennis space are controlled by PayPal. Stripe is number two at around 19%. That's how dominant they are in this payment services market. Now, that doesn't mean that the domination is going to occur forever. And there, like I said before, in the bear cases, there's still a lot of competition. But the trust is there and the trust has been there for a while. And that's huge, especially as economies grow and the world becomes a more global kind of marketplace. So guys, our goal on this channel is to be value investors. There's value and there's price. We want to buy when price is significantly below value where there's a margin of safety. That margin of safety is needed because we don't know what the future holds. But the more margin of safety we have, the more unknowns can occur to the negative and we're still okay. It's kind of like the Monish Pabri idea of heads I win, tails I don't lose much. That's the goal with value investing is you want to buy at a price significantly lower than value. How do we determine that price? We'll get there through our stock analyzer tool. But before we go, let's go to our eight pillars. Our eight pillars are here to tell a story. 
if you have our software, if you're subscribed to our software, you can edit the pillars and make up the 12 pillars that will appear up here. And there are four quadrillion different versions. But here on PayPal, we have two X's, PE ratio and the price to free cash and the cash flow growth. Look at the difference between five year price to free cash flow and the five year PE ratio. What these are doing is we're looking at the five year numbers and seeing how the price looks today compared to those five years. We want to look at a company over long periods of time. I like the fact the free cash flow is better than the PE ratio. I like that a lot. Cash flow growth, okay. That's something to understand. I'm gonna go to the cash flow section right here and look at their cash flow. It's still been pretty consistent. If you look, look the last five years. So where is the growth gonna come from? That to me is more of a concern. Like why has it been flat for five years? That's my major concern with this company. But remember, a flat company can still be a great investment. That's the big key. You have to remember that you don't need a growing, I just saw somebody on Twitter the other day say, uh, you have to, basically paraphrasing, you have to have earnings growth in order to have a value play. Not at all. Not at all. Every investment's the present value of all future cash flow. And you can present value any sort of cash flow, whether it's growing or declining. As long as you pay a significant enough number below that value, that present value, you're okay. So back to the eight pillars. Overall, six check marks. And this one's pretty freaking close to a check mark right here. Okay. But I want you guys to see one thing. The stock is down 80% since July of 2021. Let's go look at their numbers since July of 2021. So here's June of 2021. 6.24 billion in revenue. Now they did 7 billion. Okay, so they're up on revenue. Let's go look at their profit. 1.18. Now the profit is down. But is the profit down from 1.18 to 800 million? Is that an 80% drop like the stock price? It just goes to show you guys that you can't just look at short-term directions in the stock. You have to look at it and compare it to the long-term fundamental aspect of the business. So let's check out what the analysts are saying because we have analysts on our site. And remember, take these with a grain of salt because the analysts have just as many biases, if not more, from career risk. They have the risk of if they're wrong by too much, they will get fired. <laughs> but analysts are expecting profit of $5 a share this year, growing to $9.22 in the, in the next four years. That's almost doubling. Look at this growth rate. Double digit every year. Okay, let's look at revenue growth. Not huge, but pretty ample. 30 billion this year to 46, a 50% increase over the next four or five years. All right, so even analysts are looking at it saying there's gonna be growth. The question is, does the growth justify the price and vice versa? A multi-bagger is a company that's gone up several times. A 10-bagger would be 10X, a 100-bagger would be 100X. We have read a book recently about finding multi-baggers and a lot of great value investors will tell you that the best way to do well in investing is to find great companies that can grow and become those huge multi-baggers. So how do you find them? Well, join us for our webinar next Wednesday, June 14th at 1 p.m. Eastern time. We're gonna go over this entire process on how to find appropriate multi-baggers and how to take advantage of them. You won't wanna miss this. Come check it out next Wednesday. Sign up at the link below next Wednesday, June 14th, 1 p.m. See you there. The great thing about value investing is it helps you sleep better at night. Because if you pay a price for a company with enough margin of safety, you'll understand what you're buying. And if the price goes lower, you'll buy more shares and you'll realize you have more margin of safety. The big key here is, is the long-term future of the business changed? Have the fundamentals changed? And it's very difficult to do that when the media is out there talking to you and giving you garbage in your ears. That's why I don't watch CNBC. I actually laugh at CNBC. I do go to our website for the news and other financial websites, but I, I've trained myself to chuckle when people make all these ridiculous statements about the short run. I could not care less that somebody's comp some company has a drop in margin by 1% over a quarter. It doesn't bother me at all. The question is, long-term fundamentally, did I pay a small, no, low enough price to account for that? So that's why we have the stock analyzer tool. Most popular part of our site, we're gonna do a 10-year analysis on the stock. We're gonna put all of our assumptions in, not including the balance sheet assumptions, but all of these assumptions in, and it'll tell me what price to pay that will give me the returns I want at the bottom here, all right? That's the big key here. This stock analyzer tool, 
was used 1.3 million times last year by our users. So if you like the software, what you've seen so far, you can get all this plus all the tools right here for $1 per day, $7 for seven days. You can try it out at everythingmoney.com. So go check it out. And it gives you the community here of like-minded investors because being an investor can be a lonely place. We eliminate that by giving you thousands of people to talk to every single day. All right, so let's make our assumptions here on this company. Revenue growth. Um, I'm gonna do three, six, and 9%. 3% because, okay, that seems about average. 6% because they're growing the business along with the world, et cetera. The world's gonna grow faster than probably our economy. And 9% if they absolutely crush it. Okay, pretty simple. Profit margin. Now, profit margin is down in the last year, but as you can see, it increased from a 10-year average to a five-year average. So I'm going to sit here and put in 11, 13, and 15%. Free cash flow margin, guys, look at this. The free cash flow is way higher than the profit margin, way higher. We prefer to see that the other way around. If it was the other way around, I'm asking a lot of questions. Go check out Netflix. These numbers are inverted on Netflix, and that's a big reason why I'm avoiding Netflix, Okay. So free cash flow margin. I'm going to do 16, 19, and 22. Now PE, guys. The current PE is 27. The current price of free cash flow is 14. The five-year PE is around 23. And the five-year price to free cash flow is around 14 as well. The question is, what multiples should the company be worth in 10 years? Well, guys, the historical average is 15. But for a faster growing company with a bigger moat, you should be willing to pay a higher PE, a higher multiple. Warren Buffett started buying Coke in 1987 at a 30 PE, three zero. But his comment was, it's Coke. They're price inelastic. Basically, if they could raise their price 10%, they could do that, people are still gonna drink their Cokes. And so few people worldwide still drink Coke. That was his logic. And guess what? He's made a market beating return over the since 1987 on its Coke investment. So what PE? I'm going to go 15, 17, and 19. Same with the price of free cash flow. Even though the free cash flow margin right here is much higher. Okay? So remember, guys, we're here to determine, we're here to make assessments about the future. A wide range of assessments. These are very wide ranging. And the longer your analysis goes, because you can do 20 years in our software, the wider your price will be. It's like a shotgun. The closer you are to the shotgun barrel, the closer the, the, the closer the bullets are. As you go further out, the bullets get spread more. No different here with valuation and your modeling for long-term. Now, finally, our desired return. Guys, you can get nine or 10% from investing in the S&P. So the question becomes, what, what desired return do you want? As you make higher assumptions, you should have a higher desired return. That's more margin of safety. What I like to do is, on my lowest assumptions, I tend to, with big companies, put in a lower return, like even 10%, even though I can get that in the market. Because I look at this going, these are pretty low assumptions, guys. I'm okay making 10% on these low assumptions. As I go higher, though, I need a better return. 10, 12, 14. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? 10, 12 and a half, and 15. Because it's still a young company with a lot of competition. And that competition could hurt them. You know what? The competition concerns me more. I'm going to do 11, 13, and 15%. Look what I just did there. As I was thinking about it, I was like, you know what? The competition is growing. Let me sit there and put a little bit more buffer in there for myself. So I put in more margin of safety. Now, let's hit the analyze button. Now, stick with me, guys, as we go through this explanation, because we added a new feature to our stock analyzer tool, which is incredible. It'll tell you, based on these assumptions happening here, if you bought the stock today, what your return would be. So, boom. A low price of 36 to 50, a high price of 67 to 100, and a middle price of 50 to 75. Now, guys, if your low assumptions we put above happen and you bought the stock today for 64, you, you expect it to make 8.29%. If the middle assumptions happen and you bought it today for 64, you're going to make 15%. If the high assumptions happen and you bought it for 64, you're going to make 21.65%. That is the power of this software. So guys, go to everythingmoney.com, $1 per day for seven days. Sign up now. Price goes up every month. Thank you very much for your time.